kind of gives me a good opportunity to to make more videos for the people who are interested at least so we we'll go over some basic code stuff that's uh for the uh for the beginner for the homeowner something like that cool all right and i'm going to read from it so i'm just not going off the top of my head like i usually do so might even sound prepared but let's just go over a few things shall we here we go all right all grounds and every box must be spliced together let's we'll start with that so if you have like a three gang box and you might have like two switches and a plug like it's in the kitchen you know, we know that in a kitchen it has to be a 20 amp circuit right so you would have a number 12 and then some 14s because you have lighting uh, lighting circuits that might be on a 15 amp circuit. You're going to have different size grounds. You have to tie all the grounds together. It doesn't matter what size they are in every box. And then you pigtail it down uh, to each device. So um, you wouldn't say, okay, it's a number 12. So let me just uh, put that off to its side. And then I'll put all the 14s together. And put those on the switches I got shot down for it once so I learned then so you have to tie all of your grounds together when you are splicing together any box okay no matter what the size is okay provide a ground pigtail for each switch and receptacle that's just something you have to do you can't say well let's forget about the grounds on this one the switch I'm not using it's not a plug what do I need for the switch for because of the frame of that switch it's metal it's a conductor so that's why you have to ground every receptacle every switch you have to have a, a pigtail for everyone so uh, one of my other videos we talked about pigtail it's twisting all the wires together and leaving one out that's your pigtail and that's when you loop around so I have another video about uh, parallel and uh, series and plugs and stuff like that so there's that one okay ground all metal boxes with an independent green screw or other approved device in metal boxes, uh, some have what they call a tit. It's um, it's stamped inward, so it, you can tell exactly where the ground screw goes, and they make ground screws for it. They're green ground screws. Believe it or not, so long as it's the right thread or what have you, if you color that green that screw green, it's designated as a ground. It's approved, but you're better off using a green ground screw. They have ground clips that clip onto the side of the box. You slide your wire through them, and the wire pokes right out the side of the box, and you push them onto the steel box. But for me, I never liked those because of a plug. If you got to take it out, and move it to one side or the other, it can short out on that. That's just it's, that makes it just that much more narrow for you to put your device in and out. So I'm not real big on those, but uh, so okay. Minimum six inches of wire length in boxes, including ground wires. So if you have your boxes, this is the outside of your box. Let's say. The wire coming out from it six inches six inches of free conductor so you pull it out six inches you're good you don't want much more because you've got to fold it and fold it and stuff it in that box and then it's it's a pain in the ass it might pop back into the plug and then you get a short circuit so okay non-metallic wire romex is not approved in wet or damp locations outdoor raceways and boxes are wet locations it could go into a box outside, uh, like if you're feeding a uh, weatherproof outlet. So what this is saying that you can't have it in a damp location, like it's exposed uh, to the elements, um, you know, like uh, feeding a outdoor shed or something or other. You, you can't have it exposed. You could have it in pipe. You could have it in a box. Uh, and the uh, the only Romex that you can have it's called a UF direct burial cable. That is sunlight resistant. You can you can bury that right in the ground without pipe, but still because it's uh, it's you you might hit it with a like your lawnmower or something. Let's say it's the exposure. You can't have it exposed to anything. You have to have it with in pipes. So if you had that Romex coming out, even though it's sunlight resistant, something might hit it and then you can get a short. So it's. It's used underground, but coming up where it's for uh, the exposure, um, that's where you need uh, you know, it to be in a raceway, like a pipe or in a box. Okay? All right. Don't install switches, receptacles, or fixtures in boxes for the rough inspection. This allows inspection of splices. 
devices are installed after drywall, so devices ears rest on top of the plaster of the drywall. People will put those plugs and switches in, and I've been asked to do it as well, so they can use those plugs uh, while they're drywalling. Well, for one, they'll sit inside uh, like a you know half inch drywall. They'll sit half inch deep, and then try to try to get a cover on that. I dare you, it, it won't happen. Or it'll be really loose. Each plug, if you try to pull it out, it's just you can't do it. Also, with doing that. I, uh, I used to do some work for Home Depot, the Rehab and Ready program here in Detroit, and uh, they, um, you're fixing up houses for low-income people, what have you. They wanted me to put the plugs and switches in a house while they were, because they wanted some lights on or something rather. Well, who does drywall at night? One of the cats without licenses is who, you know, at Home Depot lets you, you're supposed to be badged and everything else and qualified, but they don't care. They just, uh, they hire anybody, whoever the lowest bid, but me being licensed, I'm a stickler to code, and um, they wanted all the plugs and switches in there. Well, my problem is you're going to be cutting around these this drywall as well. You could stick your razor knife or your drywall saw inside that box and then get zapped. I don't want the liability of killing anybody because they wanted me to do this. So the, what's allowed is a GFI for like a dedicated circuit. So you'd have one for a dishwasher. I'm going to put that GFI in there anyhow. It's going to be surface mounted for the to be underneath the cabinets. So I'll do that. Maybe a bathroom plug. Then when drywall comes, I'll take it out and fix it. So it's uh, they have these these boxes that uh, when you screw into them or unscrew them, they come out. They come out like an inch or so. So you couldn't drywall over that anyways. So that's what that means. So also so that the inspector can inspect the wire. He wants to see that you spliced everything together. Um, he wants to make sure that you did it correctly, that you have the right size wire. So if not, you're going to get shot down. He wants to see it, just like drywalling before you get inspection. They'll make you take down the drywall. If uh, And, you know, I don't blame them. Who's to say how you did it, if you did it right or what have you? Um, you know, I think I'm going to stop there because i got a lot of information. We're approaching, you know, 10 minutes. But anyhow, but uh, yeah, I'm going to keep on doing these. This is kind of fun, and it's something to do while I'm uh, doing nothing. So... I don't know if I'm doing nothing. Anyways, like, subscribe, follow. Um, 